Hello everyone, my name is uh, Fadi Jaber. I'm uh, an associate professor at the Department of Biomedical Engineering at Ajman University in Ajman, United Arab Emirates. And I'll be presenting the um, uh, research work that we've been doing with my colleague Shiraz Ali, which is titled The Handheld Electromechanical Exciter for Multifrequency Peripheral Neuropathy Assessment. The work that we are describing here is related to diabetes, since neuropathy is a complication of uh, diabetes, and it is a big problem worldwide. Uh, these are some uh, a few statistics about uh, diabetes. So one in ten adults are living with diabetes currently. Fortunately, this is expected to uh, become one in eight by 2045. And uh, in the United Arab Emirates, currently it's one in eight already. And in the MENA region, which stands for Middle East and North Africa, is one in six. So it's quite a big problem in our region. Just comparatively, you know, in the United Kingdom, it's one in 12. And in the States, it's also uh, quite a problem. So one in seven over there. These are all taken from the International Diabetes Federation website. So peripheral uh, neuropathy, as I said earlier, is a complication of diabetes. And this is a condition that can develop um, in diabetic patients over the years. What happens is that uh, the um, sensory nerves, the peripheral sensory nerves of uh, that patient become deteriorated and the patient will lose sensation in the limbs. This is something that affects approximately half of uh, diabetic patients. And the reason that loss of sensation in the limbs is um, crucial is that injuries in the limbs especially in the feet can go by unnoticed untreated and hence they could get infected and we could have very uh, undesirable results like amputations to diagnose peripheral uh, neuropathy the physician needs to perform a thorough examination in order to assess the degree of nerve damage and this includes many many tests now the one that concerns this uh, particular uh, research work that we're describing here is called the vibration sensation test so here what we do is we assess something called the vibratory perception threshold so we apply a vibration stimulus to the foot or to the um, hand to the fingers for example and we in gradually increase the intensity of the vibrations until the patient confirms that they actually feel the vibration. Now, uh, we do this because modern neurology states that uh, loss of vibration sensation could be an early indicator of um, uh, peripheral neuropathy. There are several instruments available uh, in the market in order to compute VPT. And these can be split into two categories. We have stationary instruments, which um, they have a stationary base into which the vibrator is incorporated and the patient just uh, you know, places their foot or hand in order to uh, receive the stimuli. Uh, this particular one is a multi-frequency VPT, multi-frequency in the sense that it can generate stimuli at different intensities, but also at different frequencies. And according to the literature, uh, a more comprehensive assessment of VPT can be made if you uh, examine this at different frequencies. So that's the advantage offered by these types of instruments. But most of the instruments that you'll find in the market, they, will, they all vibrate at a single frequency. Now, the other category is a handheld instrument where you have a probe into which the vibrator is incorporated. That's the vibrator's head here. And this is connected to a, a base where, you know, um, it, um, it gets power and all these things. And um, you have the operator uh, handling this instead of the patient applying the foot here. The operator applies this to the foot of the patient or the hand uh, if needed. And um, the problem with both cases, or one of the problems with both cases, is that um, the amount of pressure that we exert on the um, on the vibrator's head could affect the um, uh, accuracy of the VPT that we determine. So if we uh, exceed a certain amount of pressure uh, uh, in both cases, so if the, the operator accidentally, let's say, presses this uh, vibrator head more than necessary on the foot of the patient, this could lead to um, erroneous uh, calculations of VPT. So one of the things that we're aiming here is to um, 
reduce uh, this um, excessive pressure application if possible. What we found out in our research is that, first of all, there are no handheld instruments for multi-frequency VPT assessment. The second thing is that the operator cannot control the pressure applied when placing the vib vibrator's head on the skin. Now, excessive pressure, as I said before, leads to lower VPT values than the actual results. And this will result in variability in the measurements and of course it will lead to an incorrect diagnosis. So our goal was to design a handheld exciter, a vibrator in other words, instrument for multi-frequency VPT that prevents the application of excessive pressure by the operator. So we will see how we did that uh, in the next section of the presentation where we introduce our design. So this is an overview of the instrument that we have designed which was um, designed basically using um, uh, off-the-shelf components. This is um, a toy gun and all the components that we've used are um, uh, off-the-shelf apart from a few ones that are uh, custom-made using a 3D printer. Now the instrument can be powered on and off, select the frequency that you want, uh, initiate the um, vibrations using the trigger button and what uh, we have here that initiates these vibrations is an exciter component which is uh, like a speaker that uh, can vibrate at different frequencies and intensities and this is inside a uh, custom made housing that allows it to move vertically uh, inside and outside of the instrument. Now the housing is in the position of it uh, is controlled by this um, uh, control shaft. So if we rotate this, this will move uh, up and down. You can see here the picture. You can it can move inside and outside the instrument in that direction. And the position that you wish to uh, you know have it at can be uh, determined. Can be locked uh, with this locking screw. So if I want it to be at that height, I just need to tighten the screw in order to lock it. Now we do that because. Uh, what we thought about is by using or taking advantage of the nozzle that this um, uh, toy gun had. So the nozzle here, uh, if you place it on the patient's skin, then gives you a nice stable um, uh, method in order to apply the device. Then what you can do is then uh, move this in order to touch the patient's skin, skin and prevent any excessive pressure from being applied. So if you, let's say, accidentally as an operator apply uh, excessive pressure, then most of the pressure will be uh, at this uh, nozzle uh, point yeah, or this nozzle, let's say, area. Whereas you will not be uh, applying a lot of pressure uh, on the exciter's head, which could alter the VPT value, as uh, we said before when we were talking about the challenges. So uh, we tested this method and uh, you will see the results that we got um, uh, at the end of the presentation. The uh, instrument also has a patient button to allow the patient to select uh, or to uh, confirm that they have felt the uh, vibration at um, a certain level, uh, which you know is connected to the instrument using this socket. There is a display also that shows the amplitude and frequency of the uh, vibrations too. And there's also a reset button to start everything uh, from the beginning. The design of the instrument includes a microcontroller which accepts inputs from all these buttons that I mentioned before, the frequency, the reset, the trigger, the patient button, and outputs the uh, value of the frequency and the intensity of the uh, vibrations here. It also controls a digital potentiometer which is responsible for attenuating an output voltage uh, signal, square wave signal, which is generated by the microcontroller and attenuated depending on the wiper position of that potentiometer to selected levels in order to drive the exciter which produces the vibrations. So the intensity of the vibrations are controlled by uh, the signal which comes from the digital potentiometer which is in turn controlled by the, um, the value of which is uh, controlled by the, um, the microcontroller. The frequency uh, of the signal is determined by the microcontroller itself since we are controlling the period at which the output signal goes uh, high and low. So that allows us to control the frequency and the digital potentiometer allows us to control the amplitude of the vibrations. 
So here is the instrument um, from the inside where you can see all the components that I showed you in the previous slide. So you can see the microcontroller, the digital uh, potentiometer, the uh, amplifier here, and of course uh, the exciter is not uh, visible from here, but it's inside the housing here, the special housing that we 3D printed. We also 3D printed the housing for the uh, display. And we also uh, 3D printed the mechanism that allows the um, uh, uh, housing with the exciter to move vertically, as was explained earlier. So you can see here the mechanism using this uh, gear here that allows or that converts, let's say, the uh, rotational movement of the shaft into a linear movement, allowing this to move uh, vertically, as was uh, explained earlier. To calibrate our uh, instrument, we used an accelerometer, which was incorporated into a smartphone. So we basically um, uh, positioned the smartphone on top of the nozzle of the instrument, and we generated the, um, in the vibrations. We did that in order to measure the intensity of the vibration, the acceleration, uh, more correctly, of the um, of vibrations. Uh, and uh, we use those values that we measured in order to calibrate our instrument so that uh, depending on the uh, output that is generated by the um, uh, digital potentiometer that drives the uh, exciter, then we would have um, uh, a specific acceleration for that value. So here you can see um, a recording made using the uh, accelerometer where um, we actually uh, gradually increase the um, acceleration uh, of or the intensity you could say of the vibrations until the patient uh, presses the um, uh, patient button which means that they have felt it the um, other thing that we did is we tested the uh, frequency that uh, the device can generate and we found out that it is indeed in the range between 4 hertz and 500 hertz of course the measurements had an error uh, between 0.1 and 4.2 hertz which is quite a small error and acceptable value for um, according to um, uh, the international standards to the ISO uh, standards that are uh, specific to this particular uh, type of measurement. And uh, the um, other and very interesting um, finding in, in our um, results is that uh, we used a force sensor which we placed on the, um, uh, on the exciter's head in order to measure the force which is exerted during uh, a measurement um, using the nozzle method. So remember uh, in uh, earlier I explained that using the nozzle which we use as a support in order to prevent the uh, operator from uh, exerting a, a large amount of force or pressure on um, on the on the skin of the patient which would uh, alter the results of the VPT uh, then using the nozzle method we found out that the force exerted was three times smaller than uh, if we did not use uh, the nozzle. So that decreases by a significant amount the amount of uh, force or pressure that uh, is applied uh, maybe unwillingly, but nonetheless it's there and it can alter the results of the, um, of the measurement. Since uh, this is work in progress, there are several things that uh, we wish to do. One of them is uh, to make sure that the instrument is fully compliant with international standards, since there is um, a standard for uh, that particular type of instrument. For instance, the instrument that we have currently is capable of um, applying stimuli with an increasing intensity until the patient feels them. However, international standards state that you need to repeat this several times and not only in an, an uh, ascending order, like gradually increasing the uh, stimuli, but also in a descending order. So starting from a high level of intensity and gradually decreasing the intensity until the patient no longer feels the stimulus. So uh, these are things that we need to uh, fine tune in our instrument in order to make it fully compliant. Uh, and the second thing we want to do is to uh, experiment on healthy subjects. That will help us to establish a baseline for um, for those subjects yeah, that uh, are uh, neuropathy free and uh, for that we have applied for um, uh, approval already and we also need to perform experiments on neuropathic patients after that. This uh, concludes this presentation. Thank you very much for watching.